What's up and welcome back to Still Potable. Today is a free episode on the CLNS Network presented, brought to you by Game Time and Prize Picks. Use promo code CLNS to sign up there. And if you want to subscribe to Still Potable, the best Celtics podcast ever, you should check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash still potable. We have podcasts Monday through Friday, every week, even through the dead of the summer. We're coming to you today after Team USA blasted South Sudan. Not really. It wasn't really a blasting, I guess. Uh, they had some trouble with Carleek Jones, but Jason Tatum started. Didn't play well, but he started. Play, played a number of minutes. Drew Holiday and Derek White played better. I'm Jay King from The Athletic, here with Brian Robb from MassLive.com. b Rob. The Jason Tatum saga continues, and Steve Kerr chose a new DNP CD candidate today, and it was Joel Embiid. So, kind of a dramatic summer for for Team USA compared to what the usual is. Yeah, just um, and honestly, Jay, this that move is a kind of I think maybe setting the tone in terms of like what Kerr is trying to do game to game here and saying, okay, yeah, everyone's going to have to sacrifice and I don't care who you are. If I don't think the matchup's right, it's not there. Uh, you know, I'm going to make this move. But with that said, I don't think Tatum should have been, I think order is restored now that Tatum is back in the fold, even though he didn't play well today. And I don't know with this Embiid situation, I don't know if we, we wanted to start off the way that like Anthony Davis and, and BM out of bio are just better centers than him right now. So I wonder how this kind of, plays out going forward here um not certainly in it's the meaningless game on saturday against puerto rico but once you get into the knockout round it'll be interesting to see how that part of it plays out how do you how do you kind of view that from just the mb standpoint of, of this team right now it's just really interesting um he's another guy obviously talent wise he should be playing they recruited him to play he had other options to play in the olympics he could have joined france if he wanted to, which would have been really weird with Victor Wembanyama and Rudy Gobert, I'm not sure how they would have guarded, how they, how anyone would have scored on them at the rim would have been so bizarre, but sort of fun in a quirky way. Um, but obviously, he chose Team USA, and now two games into the group stage, he was benched like Jason Tatum was before him. Um, I tend to think like. It's 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 been a weird dynamic for Embiid um, because he just plays a different style, sort of than than they're trying to play. They want to play fast. They want to um, shoot a lot of threes. They want to, and it's just like they haven't given him the touches that he normally thrives on. I tend to think though, like if you can't get Joel Embiid to play well, <laughs> maybe try some different stuff before like just benching him. Like he he averaged thirty four points a game in the NBA. Um, obviously, like there are some fit issues, but like just try some different stuff before benching him. To me, but Anthony Davis has outplayed him. It's just and and then t- Tatum started today, didn't play great. Hit the side of the backboard on his one three pointer, which is wild. Saw that all wild long, like, in the him. corner, yeah. And so it just seemed like he was playing unsure of himself, honestly. It didn't seem like he was playing confident basketball, which is very strange to see from Jason Tatum. Yeah, and you wonder just whether the effects of getting that DMP CD prior for the first time and I'm sure maybe his whole basketball career um, and whether, you know, it's you're making your Olympic debut of 2024 and that's the maybe just natural butterflies that come from that, but... I do think offensively he's 
non-rhythm. Um, but that's it's tough to get into a rhythm on this team, period, just with the townies that's out there with him and the touches these guys get. But I thought defensively he got after pretty well. Um, certainly shows like that's yeah, probably gonna be the strength of him on this team. And he kind of put it, you know, had a nice block from behind and just is was generally in that starting five that was out there, that revamp starting five. Uh, certainly is one of the if one of the top two, three guys out there from a defensive standpoint. It, it does he have a crisis of confidence right now with his three point shot? Because like, forget the DMP, forget whatever else is, has been going on with Team USA. None of that will matter. But he just went through a, a playoff run where he shot very poorly from behind behind the arc, and now. It just seems like like he's not looking for his three point shot. He's not hunting them. And when he does get them, it's like he's not just taking them confidently. Um are you worried that this will carry over? That like, this will become like a Chuck Knobloch, like Nick Anderson, <laughs> uh Rick and Keel situation? Or or is this just like a little blip that everybody should kind of just take a deep breath and realize Jason Tatum, despite seeing his pull up three numbers dip a lot over the last few seasons has always been, and even was this season, uh, a legitimate three point shooter, especially catching shoots. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not there yet. As far as worrying, I think over the course of his career, he has been a streaky, like three point shooter went with like some month lulls or lulls that have lasted over a month at times. And then when he turns it around, he really does turn around. Now this is the fact that this time's out. Maybe this is the longest stretch of this career. That certainly he does not look confident in that shot. And like you said, the numbers from a spot up perspective or a pull perspective have been rough um, this year overall, but it's, it's a point now where I definitely don't, I'm not going to judge any of his shooting on the Olympic standpoint compared to what he can do on the NBA standpoint. I don't think that's necessarily going to translate there, but it is, it is worth watching. And the fact he was able to lead this team so well without having that shot there during their run, Jay, like you do wonder like if he's going to, how much of this game he is going to adapt. If there is a, not a crisis of confidence there, or just a recognition being like, wow, the, the comp, what I was from a shooting standpoint, I may not be at that level anymore. And how do I, am I going to adapt to it at all? Um, whether it's here in Paris or heading into next season. Yeah, and the the numbers for his career have just kind of tailed off the last several seasons. And, like, obviously he was in a very different role early in his career, but I, I, I just pulled up his three. So he shot 43.4% as a rookie. He was, for the most for most of that season when Kyrie was playing, he was a secondary piece just kind of living on open threes. He became a volume shooter his third season. That was his best three-point shooting season of his career to me. He shot seven threes a game, 40.3%. At that point, it looked like his pull-up three, his sidestep three, all of that was going to be just a huge weapon that nobody would have answers for because he's six eight and can get a shot off at any time. But that, that type of shot has just kind of disappeared for him over the last few years. And this season was actually one of his best three-point shooting seasons in a while, 37.6% on 8.2 threes per game. But then the playoffs come, and he shot 28.3%. Uh, so I, I'm with you. There, there's no concern. There's no worry yet. Um, for the fit with Team USA, if he's not confidently shooting catch-and-shoot catch threes, if he's not confidently looking for catch-and-shoot threes, just makes it, more difficult to for him to find minutes for him to fit next to the better lineups on the team but to to me this should be his mission for the rest of the off season or the beginning of next season just find that rhythm again and because when he is when his three point shooting is going in and and he's knocking down the off the dribble shots and his catch and shoot numbers this past year, I think he was like 43% on catch and shoots. They, that was fantastic until the playoffs. Like when he's like that, it it's just very, very difficult to stop him. 
but he has to get back to that. And I do wonder if the playoff run and the start of this Team USA run is just kind of messing with his mind a little bit. Yeah, it's fair because even going like it goes beyond the the start of the Team USA uh, play and obviously the playoffs here. Like he shot thirty two percent from three in April as well in a five game stretch, and you have to go all the way back to March to when he had a really standout month at forty five point nine percent from three. So it is it is like whatever three four months now where he just has been. That's I'd say fair to say the, the longest slump of his career and to go twenty eight percent from three point range when he's even had bad months that has to be one of the the worst two month stretches of his entire career without a doubt. So it is, you wonder how much he can turn that around here and obviously what's going to be limited playing time for him. Um, but certainly he needs to, whether it's with that starting unit, whether it's coming off the bench here, that's certainly something to watch for, for Celtics fans going forward here. Just like how, if he can kind of get over the hump there, cause outside of, you know, he had what the, a couple dunk slash layups tonight. That was pretty much it and is certainly not being aggressive looking for a shot right now. Yeah, and it's – this could be just dumb. <laughs> it could be just a dumb, dumb conversation. No, he, he got benched the other day, Jay. I mean, it's, He I mean, did get benched, and, but the sample size of three-pointers by him for Team USA is so small. Yeah. And when you add in the 130-something he shot in the playoffs, it becomes a little smaller sample size. But even then – it's a tiny sample size compared to the rest of his career, compared to this, this whole past regular season when he shot, like I said, 37 point something percent. So I don't want to overreact much, but but certainly the shot right now is not what we're used to seeing from, from Jason Tatum. Hey, do you know what's fun summertime activity going down to Fenway and watching the Red Sox play baseball? I did it a couple days days ago and it was a lot of fun and i got there using game time game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of major league baseball which makes getting tickets faster and easier prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch and with last minute deals all in prices and views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying mlb tickets if you went on game time, you could have seen the Boston Celtics celebrate the world championship with the trophy. Joe Mazzula looking like a second baseman there. Game time is the absolute best place to get last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. It's easy to find and buy MLB tickets for air, any other kind of event in your area. You get to view seats from the venue. And again, that has that lowest price guarantee event cancellation protection. It's got everything you want, including zone deals, all-in pricing, and ticket coverage. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. It was Drew Holiday and Derek White who played the best from Team USA, and especially Derek White. I just I just think the way he played for the Celtics has translated perfectly to, to this Team USA, and he's making the hustle plays, the tips from behind. He's making the swing three-pointers. He's running pick and rolls and finding Anthony Davis for dunks. He's just doing a little bit of everything like he did for the Celtics, and it's allowed him – to I don't know if standouts the right word for Team USA because they have a lot of guys standing out. I think it's a very fair word, Jay. Like it, it's it's at least allowed him to just al- allow other players around him and the lineups that he's in to flourish. They've played great with him on the court throughout this whole run. I mean, through two games here, I think it's fair to say he's been from an all around impact perspective, like fourth, fifth, sixth on this team. Overall, I think that's like a fair, like from a defensive perspective he, in the numbers today. I mean, he three of three from the, you know, the field, 10 points, hitting his threes on top of all the intangible stuff. It's like if the intangibles is there, that's why he's on this team to begin with to, to bust his ass like you laid out there. And clearly from an effort perspective, giving them much more defensively as anyone else on this team outside of maybe Drew Holiday. Um, but when you add in how naturally you know just how in rhythm he already looks right now offensively which we saw throughout this last season and even 
like even that lob to Bam, uh, like the, the chemistry with just like some of the bigs on this roster right now, like the he can wear many different hats on this team. And that's a very valuable thing with the amount of talent they have around him. And so that ability um, clearly makes him, you know, an integral part of this this team right now. And it makes me wonder, Jay, just like, is he just cementing himself as part of Team USA's future right now uh, with just the, the type of play he's had? I know he played once on like the World Cup team before. What was that, like five years ago? Um, but it makes me wonder now if just like, He's just like seems to be obviously a great player in the NBA, but just a, a tremendous international player as well. Yeah, and, and some of that is dictated will be dictated by his age and how he progresses deeper into his career. He's he just turned 30. And so right now, obviously he's in his prime, but like four years from now, next Olympics could be a different story. Who knows what Derek White will be like by then? He's been super durable. I'm not trying to <laughs> rush the end of Derek White's it's career or anything, anything here. Uh, he was no, he might not be in his prime anymore at 30. In his contract extension. But yeah, like like who who knows if he'll still be at this level in four years in 2028. Um if, especially if he takes more cheap shots from South Sudan. That, yeah, that was a that was a rough one. That was a tough screen. And it was a it's almost a tough sequence for Celtics fans. So you're watching the broadcast, it was like Derek White got hurt. He he holds his the, the screen comes and the screen like just kind of sh- put his shoulder into the lower back of Derek White, and Derek White held his back and then, then like fell at the other end of the court. And while while he's like laying on the ground after getting knocked down or falling or whatever and he had just held his back they're like oh and drew holiday's hurt at the other <laughs> end of the court <laughs> and he's he's reaching down <laughs> toward his shoe and it was like whoa man like what, what's going on with the celtics backcourt right now turned out everyone was okay but but during that brief moment i was like oh man if if tatum is hitting the side of the backboard and just coming off a of dmpcd and then the entire backcourt gets injured within, you know, 10 seconds of each other, this would be really, really poor for the Boston Celtics. However, the the crisis was averted. Everyone seemed to be okay. But but really, I was like, oh, man, imagine imagine how awful it would be if, if both those guys got hurt against South Sudan. Yeah, that was a, a scary minute. And then I think Tatum on top of it also took on that drive when he scored in, in garbage time, he seemed to be holding his like thigh. I think he took a knee to the, the thigh or something like that. Yeah, he didn't he look like he was defensive. moving great into the huddle after that. That's a real so. physical game. Those guys, I mean, which is you expect it's the Olympics. Um, but South Sudan were was they're getting after it. That was and they're like, pretty good. Like they yeah. have they have some legitimate players. Like Shyok was very good at Iowa State. Um Carly Jones, Louisville obviously had a legitimate college career too. Like those guys can play. Wenya Gabriel has played for a number of NBA teams, including not really the Celtics, but he was with the Celtics at training camp. Um, so they have like some guys with with pedigree, and and they're okay. Carly Jones like just kind of was hunting Stephen Curry there for a while, just kept scoring on Stephen Curry. They weren't giving Curry much help. Um, at that point, obviously, they had like a 15-point lead, 20-point lead, Team USA did. And I think they were just like, yeah, twos twos can't hurt us, so let's just not provide any help and let Steph try to guard him. And Steph was not guarding him particularly well. You wondered just, Jay, as this tournament rolls on here for into games that matter next week, if, I mean, Steph obviously had a really tough shooting night uh, tonight and was, I don't think, particularly great on Sunday. From uh, he's clearly the one guy that they can really pick on defensively here, um, in those starting five. So you wonder when push comes to shove, like Steve Kerr obviously isn't going to abandon him or anything like that. But when when it matters, I don't know, most, like, he's DMP- given a lot of other guys DMPCD. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, Steph I'm just kidding. Not, There's not no way he's, he's giving Steph that. But like crunch time wise, like is he certainly going to go offense defense or stuff to get him off the floor? But is like is Derek White or is Drew Holiday going to be the guy with like? Even those guys have it going offensively too. You're just like, yeah, this might not be Steph's 
night. Like this, we, we might just be better off of one of these two Celtics on the floor for a certain matchup where Curry's being hunted. Oh yeah, and so last game, uh, Drew Holiday and Derek White. I don't know if they played at all together. Drew was with the starters. Derek White was with the bench. Tonight or this afternoon, rather, um, they both play with the bench. Jason Tatum started in in Drew's place, and I just thought they played really well together. I do wonder if if you are trying to get Tatum going, and maybe that's not one of Steve Kerr's concerns. You have a lot of guys like it's not about Jason Tatum individually; it's about what your team can do. But I do wonder, like, if you want to get him going, if playing him next to his two teammates is a way to do that and again like i don't know if that's one of the things steve kerr is even considering i don't know if he cares about getting jason tatum going at this point maybe jason tatum should just get himself going and maybe not hit the side of the backboard on a three but but i like that's clearly a a great trio or has been a great trio in the nba probably would be in an international competition as well um so that could be something that they consider, but Tatum, Tatum does have to play better. Like you just obviously you're you're on. I don't know if the chopping block is the right word, but like you're on the fringe of the rotation. You're you. It's on you to just kind of force your way in there. And obviously, Jason Tatum is not used to being there. I've talked about how shocked <laughs> and, and uh, just how I kind of disagree with the entire approach Steve Kerr has taken to some of this stuff, but like, and at this point, you just have to play better. You have to take advantage of the opportunities. There was one play, kind of over-penetrated, got into the middle of the lane, got lucky that he drew a foul, um, but like, just just got to play better. Um, but Drew, Drew was great. Again, Derek White has been great. I thought when those guys came in in the first quarter, that just kind of totally changed the game. They uh, they picked they started picking up full court. Anthony Edwards did too. He had one possession where he was just hounding somebody and picked his pocket. Um, it's also weird with the point differential because Anthony Edwards <laughs> at the end of that game, like, Get him up, pick, pick somebody's pocket with like twenty five seconds left, went in for a dunk. Then South Sudan comes back, and normally in like an NBA situation, if you're down 15, 17, whatever it was at that time, you just dribble out the rest of the clock. But point differential matter- matters, so Carly Jones <laughs> drills a three, and then Anthony Edwards comes back <laughs> and, and hits a three of his own with like less than 10 seconds left. So kind of like an in-season tournament vibe there with – uh the guys just kind of gunning for extra points, and I don't think point differential will probably matter to Team USA, but but it could. And uh, anyway, it gives you the freedom and and reason to to go hunt another bucket. You got to avoid that forty point disaster against Puerto Rico on Saturday. This is Anthony. You know, this is, and you can bet Joe Mazzulla is what loving every minute of these late game makes. <laughs> turning back the clock to the the Andre Drummond hacking in the uh, although the that turned into a debacle for Joe Joe was trying to apologize to Drummond after that one and Drummond didn't want to talk to him and it was it was really like a, a scene in the the back hallways of TD Garden that night it was so funny um, but yeah Joe if there are rules Joe is going to try to stretch them and take advantage of them it was interesting tonight too. If Drew, I feel Tyrese Halliburton also got into the game and yep. made some threes. Looked looks obviously sat out there, and Drew seemed to be like the one guy who was, you know, the on the outside looking in for the first half to give him those minutes. But that really doesn't matter right now because joining us live here, fresh off the bar exam, sup Sam- fuckers? <laughs> How'd the bar exam go, How'd it buddy? Go? Wow, fucking no, man! It, it, it happens. I was there. I answered the questions. Do you feel confident? What What would you say is is your level of confidence right now? I'm pretty confident. I had to be better than a third of the people in there, and I was looking around, and a third of the people looked like dummies. So I think I could probably pass. What do you think you look like? 
uh, fucking champion. I wore Celtics <laughs> championship gear the entire time. No one said shit in the entire cowardly city of Philadelphia. Not one comment other than compliments. It's just an embarrassment for the city of Philadelphia. I just wore the championship banner 18 all over their faces. They didn't say anything. You didn't have any. Uh, see, if it was a Philly, I know they would have been giving you crap about Jason Tatum, but I guess they can't because Embiid got a DMP CD too today. Oh, the old switch reverse, the old switcheroo. Embiid <laughs> didn't play. So uh, I, I was texted this today. Um, it's only the pure sweat clients, the Drew Hanlon clients, who have gotten DMP CDs oh. so far. So is there a Drew Hanlon conspiracy theory here? Is is that what's going on? I, I, I don't know. Are there any other pure sweat clients on the team who are going to sit out for Puerto Rico? Uh, well, Jalen Brown has worked with Drew Hanlon. I wouldn't call him like a, a client, but he has worked with him in the past. Also not invited to the team. So... Did it could be a pure, pure sweat <laughs> conspiracy. Tam did not have a good game, Packer. He was uh, four points. Uh, he hit the side of the backboard on a three. Yikes. Um, yeah, was, uh, but he started. So uh, He started. Play. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Steve. But um, what's, your, what's your celebratory game plan today? What's the... Well, I just drank about four drinks. Uh, now I'm about to take a bus to New York City, and then I'll be there for the next couple of days. There yeah. you go. Hey, congratulations. You're done with your first attempt at the bar. After you learn <laughs> after you learn you failed it, you'll have to register again and do this all again. But for now, I'm happy for you. You can take a little break, come back to podcasting pretty soon. It'll it'll be great to have you back. If I fail the bar, I'm quitting the podcast because I'm gonna have a full time job and have to study for the bar. So it's in your best interest to root wow. for me to pass. That's a really good point, Jim. You know, and you have to wait what, like a month, two months here to figure this out. To find out till October. That's wild. Well, at least uh, we get the whole off season in. So, so you're telling me that if you fail the bar, that not only will I have a reason to give you shit for the rest of eternity, but I'll also get rid of having to speak to you on a semi daily basis. Yeah, I mean, you can you can have your bravado and act like that would be a, a bonus for you, but it, it, you know it wouldn't. You know it in your heart that you uh, love me and my antics. So I'm just not going to accept that. You would also, help me I, study for the next one. You'd be your personal. I I feel guy. like I also feel like you took the wrong approach. You know, looking around and saying you have to be better than than one third of the people when really you're not competing against them. You're competing against yourself. And, and that was, that was your first mistake. I think your entire internal culture is wrong. I'm, I'm better than a third of me. If that makes any sense. I don't think it does. It, it, it doesn't. Does. Those, those drinks must be hitting right now. Yeah, doing <laughs> Where are you right now? Like, I'm underneath a bridge on Spring Garden Street in East Philadelphia. Walk into the bus stop. There you go. You're a big public transportation guy. I respect that about you. Love it. Love it. Also, don't own a car, so it's kind of my only source. Big walking guy, big public transportation guy. Um, but uh, just want to congratulate you. God bless. And, uh, Hope hope you did well. Hope you passed the bar, even though I'll say otherwise, many many times I'm sure. But I assume you passed. You're 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 smarter than you look. Yeah, no, people are shocked to find out that I have the ability to learn things. But uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate the yeah. opportunity to check in. Uh, drunken drunken statements and stuff like that. No. Do Do you remember any uh, of the toughest questions that you were? dealt today uh yeah so you some brain buster i mean i just had 200 multiple choice questions so there's nothing that like sticks out is the bar a scantron uh it is the second day so there were two days it's a two-day test what's the first yeah, the day the first day is uh eight different essays that's God. a lot of essays you got a real nice. ball buster question about adverse possession and subsequent ownership of adverse possession and 
legal claims based on adverse possession, and you folks don't even know what adverse possession is. I think it's it's when you uh, get possess a steal. something adversely. Right. Yeah, like it's not a not a when you when you when you foul somebody while you steal it. So <laughs> kind of that's that's yeah, adverse yeah, yeah. possession, not not yeah. true possession. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. You're also not right. It's wild. <laughs> not right. <laughs> All, All right, right. Coach, I uh, I gotta go, but I appreciate uh, the, the opportunity to check in. Yeah, right, good we work, gotta Packer. go too. Appreciate you, Packer. See ya later. That was that was Packard from the streets of Philadelphia, where he just finished the bar exam. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. <laughs> Enough Team USA talk for now. We'll be back again with the Friday episode and. Back again every week, Monday through Friday, even during the Celtics offseason. Come sign up. Come subscribe. Patreon.com slash Still Potable. It's an awesome place. We've got a chat for the people where a bunch of Celtics fans have built a really cool community. So sign up. Come and join us. And uh, come hang out. We'll catch you later.